Today, I'm going to be making cannoli cookies with ricotta cream filling. I will have the link below so that you can make these cookies yourself. It'll be right in the description. Uh, so what you need, you need a, uh, I'll show you this right at the beginning. To make this recipe, you're going to need cheesecloth. This is Farberware, which you buy at Walmart. This package was like $3.35 or something like that. It's very, very cheap. And you buy it in the uh, home, like um, the kitchen. Where the spatulas and the, the big spoons and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so you're going to need that. You're going to need um, a stand mixer is what the recipe says. That's not Tammy. That's the recipe. I've had people get mad when I've said that before about you need a stand mixer, but that's what she says. And you also need a baking sheet. So the ingredients you'll need is three-fourths cup uh, salted butter softened. It says you can substitute with regular butter. This is just regular butter. Uh, you need a fourth cup of sugar and one cup of brown sugar, two eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla, two and a fourth cups of flour. This is just all purpose flour. One teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, one cup of mini chocolate chips and it says you can use regular but if you've seen pictures of these cookies before they're really really cute with these mini chocolate chips so I just bought the semi-sweet minis you need one cup of whole milk ricotta we're going to be straining it but you want to we're going to be straining it in half so both this is half a cup and half a cup you're going to use the whole cup and then you need one cup of powdered sugar a fourth cup uh, more of those mini chocolate chips and an eighth teaspoon of cinnamon. So we're gonna move some stuff out of the way and we'll be right back for the first step. So the directions, I'm gonna let Kevin do this part because I'm gonna talk, talk us through it. The directions say, start by straining your ricotta. Place half of your ricotta in your cheesecloth. So this is half the cup. So this is half because we're going to be doing, like I said, a whole cup to begin with. It says twist and gently squeeze out as much liquid as possible. Repeat with the second half of your ricotta. Once strained, discard the liquid. And they said that um, you want to make sure to thoroughly strain your ricotta because any excess uh, liquid can lead to a soggy filling. So uh, we are just going to take our time with this and because uh, Kevin watched some videos, we've never done this before. I've never bought cheese cheese cloth in my cheese life cloth. no we've never owned it um we've never done this before so kevin watched a couple of videos on youtube and they were telling you to do this overnight yeah like sit it in a sieve and let it sit in here and let it drain overnight so yeah so my directions did not say that so if you're wondering why are you doing it this way i'm following uh, the directions on this recipe So we have our strained ricotta. Now the instructions say, uh, it says place your strained ricotta in a bowl, add your powdered sugar, cinnamon, and chocolate chips. This is the fourth cup of chocolate chips. Okay. Well, and you that. want to mix until combined and then we're gonna set it aside. Right. I'm gonna put the, powder, the cinnamon in the middle. Cinnamon, it's just an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. So it's oh. not a lot of cinnamon. I'm gonna do that first. Uh, and you're going to slowly mix in your powdered sugar? Yeah. Because I would think the powdered sugar would dry it out. So now we're moving on to our mixer. You want to put your room temperature butter in the mixer. And we're going to whip this up until it's fluffy. And then we're going to add our sugar and brown sugar. So now we want to 
going to add our eggs and vanilla and mix it until it's a paler color. Now we're going to add our salt, baking powder, and flour. to add our mini chocolate chips to the mix and then we're gonna just mix this on low until it's combined directions do not say to do this but I'm going to I'm going to weigh my dough uh, because I you're supposed to get 14 large cookies well now that I've started doing this if I, I just I prefer to weigh the dough um, that way you so, go guessing. So sometimes, like, if the directions don't say to do it, then I haven't done it. But for for this one, I'm going to do it because, yeah, there's no guesswork. And um, I want to make sure they're, they all weigh the same. So this weighs 1,055 grams. So if we divide that by 14 cookies. 75. So we want each cookie to be 75 grams. So roughly. I, roughly, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna pick this up and put it, dump it back in my bowl. Like this. And then we're gonna use this again. And so we want to get uh, 75 grams. 74 so I'll go with that so I'm going to it's kind of sticky I'm gonna roll it into a ball and then I'm gonna flatten it out with the palm of my hand as I'm doing it <laughs> like I said it's kind of sticky okay so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna put seven cookies on each I have two baking sheets with parchment paper I'm gonna uh, put seven cookies on each uh, sheet but I'm gonna weigh each one and show you what we're gonna do for the next part because what you have to do is you have to do this next part and then you have to put these in the refrigerator for half an hour to uh, to chill so what we want to do next I'll show you for this pan and then you'll know that I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the for the second pan uh, so we're, we have our filling here and we're gonna take a teaspoon and you're gonna make a well in the center of each cookie. And like I said, it's kind of a sticky dough. So it, it wants to stick. And then you don't want to take out the bottom of your cookie like I just did. So you can't press too hard. Yeah, they don't have to be really deep, I don't think. I'm wondering if I didn't flatten mine out too much because I'm not having the edge. It's not like, I think I might have flattened mine too much. I'm gonna go back through. I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna make mine a little, I'm gonna make them tighter so that I get more of a well because I think I did flatten them out too much because I'm not getting that, that well that I wanna get. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'll just use my finger, and that way I don't have to worry about that spoon. But see, I'm just gonna pull it in a little bit, like that. Okay, so the, what the, the exact directions say uh, roll your cookies into balls and lightly press them down with your fingers. You should get about 14 cookies. Using the back of a teaspoon, press down the centers of your cookies to create a well for your cream. Then place about a tablespoon of your cannoli cream mixture into the center wells of each cookie. So I have a tablespoon here and I'm not gonna 
go over like I always do, and I'm gonna put that right in the center. ahead and put this pan in the refrigerator but then I'm not going to start my half an hour timer until I get both pans in but just know I'm going to do the exact same thing to that I did to this pan to the next pan and then uh, what you want to do uh, about 15 minutes into your half hour you're going to want to preheat your oven so when you come back after half an hour make sure that your uh, oven is uh, heated to 350 degrees my cookies have been chilling for half an hour. I left them in for 15 minutes and then I preheated my oven to 350. Left these, they continued to stay in for another 15 minutes and now it's been 30 minutes. So I'm gonna put both pans in the oven. I'm going to bake these for 14 minutes. It doesn't give like 14 to 15 or 16 to 18 or whatever. It says 14 minutes exactly and then we'll be back. My cookies took 16 minutes, not 14 minutes. I took them out at 14 and they were still raw. I mean, it was like raw dough. Uh, so I left them in for an additional two minutes and they came out perfect for me. So what you wanna do is you want to leave them here and then we're gonna let them cool completely. It's been about 25 minutes and my cookies are um, completely cooled off. What I did was, is I moved them over to the cooling rack after 15 minutes, and then I put the cooling racks on top, back on top of my parchment paper, because we're going to be dusting these with powdered sugar on the top. Now, I'll still have to clean my pans because it's gonna get on the edge, but it will save it from getting all over the place. So what I have is I have a bowl and just a cereal bowl, and then I have the sieve, and I'm gonna take a tablespoon. It doesn't tell you how much you need, it just says dust them. I'm gonna take a heaping tablespoon and just uh, put it here like this. And if I need more, I'll get more. Um, but I'm gonna start over here and just, we're gonna just tap. A cannoli cookies with ricotta, ricotta cream filling, a modern cookie twist on the traditional Italian cannoli. This recipe features a soft and chewy cookie with a delicious ricotta filling in the middle, topped with a sprinkle of powdered sugar. And so it says, a stand mixer is not at all required, but it just makes mixing so much easier. Uh, storage instructions. The cookies are best enjoyed fresh, but you can store them in an airtight container for three to four days in the fridge. You can also freeze them in a Ziploc bag and let them thaw in the fridge when you are ready to eat them. It says one cookie is 300 calories. So, um, okay. That's not a guess, I'm betting. How does the bottom of yours look? The bottom of mine looks great. Looks good? Yeah. Okay. I think all the filling came off. I'm gonna half mine so that I can get a bite of that. Wow. Right in the center. Mm. Well, without the canola stuff, it's a really nice cup chocolate chip cookie. That's what I. That's what I got. <laughs> When I measured out the eighth of the teaspoon of cinnamon, Kevin said, what's the point? Yeah, he said, not much cinnamon. He said, what's the point? There's not much cinnamon. And I thought, you're gonna be able to taste it. You said that, you said you'll be able to taste it. That is a cinnamon chocolate chip cookie. That is not a chocolate chip. That is a cinnamon chocolate chip cookie. I absolutely, the first taste, the first flavor I got was the cinnamon. Well, but that's in the cream. So okay. that's what, so oh, you got Oh, so you tasted, oh, okay. I didn't just taste the cookie. If you just so. eat the cookie, it's, a, oh. it's just a really nice sugar mm, Okay. Oh, you're right. Hmm. Mm. It's a good, it's a really okay. good chocolate chip cookie. I didn't really, I thought you had taken a bite out of everything. No, not the first bite. But that ricotta in the middle, mm -hmm. that's what you taste, the mm -hmm. cinnamon. 
I got a little some. I mean, it's not strong, but you do get some. It's not overpowering. Right. But you know it's there. No, it's there. Um, I love the um, ooey gooey texture. Mm -hmm. It's good. It it's, is very it's, soft. Cinder is very soft. Um, and it's so soft that you could take it like a piece of pizza and you could look right. and eat it like this. Like mm -hmm. a. Mm hmm. This the honest goodness truth, though. I don't think that. You ate it. Kevin's go it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Um, That's a vacuum cleaner for you. That ricotta mm -hmm. cheese filling really doesn't make a huge, a huge difference. I mean, it does make a difference, but the cookie just by itself is still a really good chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the filling, it's a little bit different flavored, but it's not like that different. I mean, it doesn't really stand out. I think much. the only thing that stands out to me about the cinnamon, the cinnamon. is the cinnamon. Yeah. That's it. I don't get. I think you could have used flavor. any. I think you could have used anything in the center, like if you had made your own frosting. I think, of course, that's going to be a different texture. Mm -hmm. But like if you had done, like. Um, the powdered sugar and water, just like for a glaze or something, but really the ricotta is making it thicker. Yeah. It's giving it that thick texture. In the center, yeah. But anything where you would have added a little bit of cinnamon would have been fine mm -hmm. uh, because you don't taste the ricotta mm -hmm. uh, at all. You no, would never surprising. know no. that was ricotta. No. And um, I'm surprised. I do like it though. Like I said, this would make just an excellent chocolate chip cookie. I'm surprised though that putting normally when you put dough in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. it doesn't spread like that. No, not that much. And I had mine in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I did it just the way the instruction said, and you saw mine spread. Um, so I don't, I don't know why that happened. Mm -hmm. But I still, even though mine are flat, they taste great. Yeah. Wow. I was uh, surprised at the bake time too because if when I I tried to take them out at 14 minutes thinking oh she said 14 it must be 14 um, and it they were raw I mean they were like um, soupy so that extra two minutes is what did it uh, so just know that 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 you might have to uh, adjust your time um, but. I think these are really good. I think they're good, but they're good chocolate chip cookies. I don't know that I would <laughs> make them again. I don't think, because like you said, it's a good chocolate chip cookie. I think I would just rather make chocolate chip cookies. There's nothing that really sets these apart enough to me to where I would want to go to the trouble again mm. and do all that ricotta and straining yeah, and all that. The water out if the you're water. wanting a little bit of a cinnamon flavor, just put the eighth of the cinnamon in the with the cookie and then you're going to get it yeah. in there. Yeah, or mix it in with the powdered sugar and sprinkle yeah, it on top. Yeah, it makes a difference with the, the visual, the look of it, mm -hmm. but it it, the ricotta just didn't make enough difference to do Flavor it again. Wise, yeah. yeah. So, does. so these are good, but this isn't one that I would repeat. No, probably not. I mean, they're good, but, but yeah, I agree. I, it's just not worth the middle part. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.